Okay, now we come to the discussion of channel capacity, one of the most important concepts in digital communications. This is covered in Chapter 9 of our textbook. And this is where complexity will really come into play. So far we've talked about complexity in terms of uh, receiver, co um, receiver complexity, its structure, coherent versus non-coherent, but there's a whole other aspect of it which is really related to channel capacity. So remember, there are three important criteria. We're thinking of bit error rate versus EB over N0 or power efficiency. There's spectral efficiency where we've seen the equation, the definition of spectral efficiency as being the transmission rate over the occupied bandwidth. And then cost and complexity. So we know somehow that we can throw cost or complexity at the problem and try to increase or get benefit from it from these two other criteria. Uh, so for instance, we know that there is this bandwidth power trade-off we've seen like between the QAM choice and the FSK choice. FSK choice, I use a lot of bandwidth, but I can go for very low EBV or zero, and the, then the opposite case, I can get very spectrally efficient, but I need more power. And the idea is this trade-off, is there some limit about giving a lot of bandwidth and being able to achieve a certain transmission rate? And that is related to uh, the channel capacity. And the capacity will be a limit about what the best trade-off is, but how do you get that trade-off? That is where complexity will come in. In order to get to that limit, the maximum limit, uh, we will use something called error correcting codes, which are really in the second half of this class. Um, so there is a limit, though. We're going to throw complexity at it, but complexity has a limit to what it can achieve, and that is the whole concept of channel capacity. Capacity is also known by the name of Shannon's Law. It's one of the most important developments in information theory. And we can state Shannon's Law uh, very simply because it gives us the channel capacity, this the C in this equation, in a very simple form. So for a given channel with a signal to noise ratio, S and R, and a bandwidth of W, uh, the capacity of the channel is given by W times a log 2 of 1 plus the signal to noise ratio. So what is the channel capacity? It's defined as the fastest we can send the fastest bits per second that we can send and have a probability of error which is arbitrarily small. Now how do we get that probability of error we want? We would use complexity to get it down to the level we want, but it says it's possible. You can throw complexity at the problem and get whatever probability of error you want, but if I try to send anything faster than this capacity, bits per second, that won't work. No matter how much complexity you throw at it, it won't work. You will not have reliable communications. So capacity is the largest transmission rate for which you can have reliable communications. So let's plot this very simple curve of the, um, here we have S and R on our x-axis in dB. And here we have, we're going to do the ratio of C divided by W uh, because this is a bits per second. This is a hertz, so I get like bits per second per hertz is this C uh, divided by W. So it's like a spectral efficiency. So what this is saying, this is the curve for this uh, equation. And there's one side which are achievable and the other side which is unachievable. So this is the maximum capacity we can have. Anything above this line is just impossible. Anything below it, yes, we can make it, but it might be very complex. Now, if we look at the ends of these curves, like if I go down the curve in this direction, it's when spectral efficiency is going to zero. You know, like uh, if I look at, um, you know, the, uh, the number of bits per second is, is going uh, really low, whereas in the other way, uh, the spectral efficiency is tending to uh, infinity. So it's like getting really, really big. Now, I can sort of flip this around and instead of spectral efficiency I can do W divided by C, though sometimes we see it like uh, that. Um, so it would be another way that we might um, uh, write our, our curves. But let's go back to C over W is the one we see the most uh, often. And there's a complexity to this that, that we're sort of ignoring and that is that as 
I increase w. So as w goes up, the signal to noise ratio is going down because remember the signal to noise ratio, it's got this signal divided by w. So it's, it's kind of kind of hard to interpret this because these axes, you know, are related to one another. Uh, so this simple equation may be uh, too simple and it really needs another uh, sort of development to, to be able to, to really interpret it well. Which brings us to an alternative form for the um, capacity. And basically what we're going to do is uh, look at this region where I'm transmitting right at the capacity. So uh, I'm going to use this idea of, we saw previously with the signal to noise ratio versus EB over N0, so it's going to help me. I'm going to basically go from uh, signal to noise ratio S over W, I'm going to go to EB over N0 because uh, that has nothing to do with the bandwidth. It has to do with the, the um, uh, spectral density, not the bandwidth. So in order to do that, uh, again, I'm going to think about transmitting right at the, the data rate, which is the capacity of it. So it's like taking this ratio of C over W, and I'm going to evaluate it. What happens when I'm transmitting exactly at the capacity? So I know that the C over W for all Cs, and including for C equal R, is equal to log 2 of 1 plus, and then here is the signal to noise ratio. So uh, the N, which is S over N, is the density times the uh, bandwidth occupied. So I can reorganize some of my terms. I'm saying that I'm going to multiply and divide by C here. And I'm going to put the C times Cn over 0, and I'm going to leave the C over W here. Because I have a C over W here, I'm going to have a C over W here, and I'm going to solve for it. So I'm going to leave that there. But now I have S divided by uh, C uh, divided by N0. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, here I am at the, the border of this, this line, and I'm at the maximum speed. And now I'm going to replace this C on this one. I'm only going to replace that one by R. Because once I re replace that by R, then I remember, oh, that's STB divided by N0. That's EB over N0. So now I've got an equation where I have a CW, uh, C over W, and EB over N0. So now instead of having a signal-to-noise ratio, which was also a function of W, uh, I have an EB over N0, which is completely independent of the bandwidth. So now uh, it's straightforward. I just uh, solve for uh, EB over N0 first, and I get W over C, and then 2 to the C of W, W minus 1. So you can see I have a new equation that relates uh, C, W, and EB over N0. Uh, and we can notice that there is a limit. It's easier to calculate the limit in this case. Suppose I let the spectral efficiency tend to zero. When the spectral efficiency goes to zero, it's very inefficient, right? Because I am sending uh, very small amounts of information over very large bandwidth. Uh, very inefficient. And I can see that if I'm very inefficient, what can I gain for it? What, what is it, the, how far can I go in throwing spectral efficiency out the window, giving you lots and lots of bandwidth so that the C over W is going towards zero. Uh, in this case, what happens with EB over N0? And we can see that EB over N0 has a, a limit, and a, it goes down as low as minus 1.6 dB. Uh, here I've uh, flipped it, so it's W over C again, and now EB over N0. Uh, you'll see that there's an asymptote here at uh, minus 1.59 dB. So in this curve, this is the direction where n is going to zero. This is the where I'm getting like really spectrally efficient. I'm sending you know so much information, hardly using any bandwidth. Here I'm sending hardly any information, and I'm using lots of bandwidth. Uh, and here I don't need much power. In fact, I can go down to where the EB over n zero is negative. The signal is lower than the noise. But if I use enough spectrum, I could still get reliable communications. So this is uh, physically uh, why we have this asymptote here, that there's some minimum level of EB over N0 for which we can have reliable communications. It may cost us in spectrum, it may cost us in complexity, but it's possible. But beyond that, it's just not possible. It's impossible.